Hello everyone, welcome, my name is Aaron, and today I'm bringing you an ESO video and I'm going to basically showcase my highest DPS character which is the Arcanist. Now, be warned before this video starts, this isn't a pass build, I don't really agree with passing um, a pass build, you have no survivability and you're basically wailing on a dummy doesn't fight back, so that's just my opinion on passing, I don't really enjoy it. I have done a number of pa a number of passes. Now if we look at my gillets, I've got it in my members note here. As you can see, we have done a bit of passing, but it's just not something I enjoy. I prefer the group content, the PvE content. This is what this is going to be. It's going to be based for group PvE, dungeons, trials. You'll be able to hold your own. As you can see, our latest tri-factor was actually in the cauldron because the barren mass was dropping. And I did that on this character, as you can see, Erebus the Darkness. So, let's talk about the build. The gear is kind of a fundamental. I feel like a lot of people use this gear when it comes to the Arcanist. So we've got Ansel Dagger. I know a lot of people use the Pillar of Nern, but we've got Ansel Daggers, Maelstrom, Inferno Staff, and Deadly. So we're using Ansel's. We're using Deadly. We also have the Velofi, so if you want to know how to get the Velofi, you basically have to rank up your Scrying to rank 7, and I'll leave a link down in the description below on where you can farm the pieces, and then you've got to go Scry them leads, and then you'll have uh, the Velofi, but the Velofi is a no-brainer for this build. It's definitely the Mythic that you want. And then also for the Mask, we have got the slime crawl. And for some reason we've got Sturdy. I need to change that to Divines. But that is basically for the crit chance. As you can see, we've got Divines on every piece of gear. Which is the Deadly set. Which increases the damage. Um, your damage over time and channel attacks do by 15%. I feel like I read that in a weird way. But basically it increases your damage over time and channel to channeled attacks by 15% and then the reason I prefer Ansel over Nern is because Ansel is just straight 7% if you end up bashing and uh, interrupting an enemy sorry maybe your tanks immobilized you can get another 7% as well so for me for the burst damage that comes with Ansel it's so useful and you really do feel that damage and the reason we're using the Maelstrom Inferno staff, which comes from Maelstrom Arena. You don't have to keep doing it over and over and over again. Say if you want to use it on different characters, make sure you just use the transmute station and basically reconstruct it. It'll cost you, I want to say about 25 crystals. However, I'm not sure. Uh, don't quote me on that. But it increases the damage to the wall of elements, which we are using. Now, Slotables, we are using the Artem Takeaway Broth. I want to get into why I'm using this. So, max health, health recovery, max stamina, stamina recovery. But this isn't a straight stamina build. And I'll get into that in just a sec. Also, we are using the Crown Tri Stat Potion. And the reason we're using that is because we already, already have the Major Savagery, Major Brutality, and all that good stuff. So, there's no point using the weapon power potion in my opinion so I just prefer to use this one I've got an abundance of these anyway so it doesn't really matter so if we go onto the character sheet here we've got all of our attribute points on uh, stamina uh, don't really care about the advanced stats I mean I pay no attention to these, to these. the only time I pay attention to these is basically on my tank because I like looking at the block cost and the batch cost and whatever else but as you can see the these are what we are running. So because we've got Ansel, we've got Major Slayer, which is really cool. We've got Minor Force, which is a 10%. Gallop, which comes from the PvP skill line. Uh, we are using the Thief Munda Stone. We've got Major Savagery, as I said. Prophecy, which is the spell and weapon critical. So we don't need the spell power potion. And we got Brutality and Sorcery. That's without the weapon power potion. And that is the reason we're using the Crown Tri-Stat Potion. Adds a bit more survivability because of the health as well. So skills. The Arcanist skills are somewhat difficult to actually remember. 
Um, we have got an Inferno Staff on the back bar, and we have got Dual Wield on the front bar. I prefer doing it like that. I don't like having like 10 abilities basically using one resource. Like, if I wanted a stamp character, I'd add some Magicka in there, maybe Magicka on the back bar, like I have with this one. And that is simply because sometimes I've got a Roll Dodge, sometimes I've got a Bash whatever it may be stamina is really important so when it comes to stamina characters i like having um i like using both resources but anyway so we've got the rune of colorless pool this is essentially a single target and it basically the easiest way i can describe it is it puts a mark on the boss i only use this on the boss and it increases their damage taken and their crit damage taken but again you only have to use this on the boss. It's not something you use for mobs. We've got Inspired Scholarship, which is the morph of Tomb Bearer's Inspiration. As you can see, while slotted on either bar, gain major brutality and major sorcery, increasing your weapon spell damage by 20%. Also, it generates crooks, which is the reason we use that. And we do apply it to the rotation. Next, we've got the Imperfect Ring formed into Fulminating Rune. And basically, this is a DPS ability, but it also drops a synergy for your teammates to use. Synergies are always a good thing, because they do help out with resources as well. We've got Room End, morphed into Evolving Room End, which again generates the Crux, but it also can heal you or your allies, depending on who needs it. And then we've got Wall of Elements, Blockade of Fire. Uh, burning enemies take 10% more damage from this ability, which is why we're using the Inferno Staff. And also the Inferno Staff, the Maelstrom one, buffs that as well. So you get even more. So it's sweet, right? As you can see, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 4 Magicka uh, abilities, and then the heal is the Stamina one. So that's the back bar, that's basically the Staff bar. And then we've got the Tide King's Gaze, which is a really powerful single target ultimate. If you put this on a mob and the mob dies, it will move on to another mob, but you're just kind of wasting its time at that point. So um, I sometimes use this, but I sometimes use Flawless Dawnbreaker, but I'll get into that in just a sec. As you can see on this bar, which is the Dagger bar, I'm using stamina abilities. So we've got the Pragmatic Fate Carver, which is basically the beam that comes from the book, and that will consume all your crooks. If you've got three crooks, it does even more damage. So you only want to be using this when the when you've got three crooks, basically. And also, it gives you a damage shield, not as strong as it used to be, but it's still really strong nonetheless. Sorry, we've got Abyssal Impact and I hate the names of these uh, Arcanist abilities because I can never pronounce them. But basically, it generates a crux. We are going to apply it into our rotation so we can get free crux before we hit the Fate Carver. But this is really, really good. It's also an Execute, but it's, it's only 100% more damage. However, that is a really, really good ability. Very strong for taking out mobs. Another one, this is under the... Dual wield skill line is Blade Cloak, morphed into Deadly Cloak, and it's basically envelop yourself in a pro protective cloak of razors, gaining major evasion for 20 seconds, reducing damage from area uh, um, area attacks by 20%. So it has some survivability, and it also uh, adds damage to any mobs that are kind of swarming around you. Maybe. Uh, you're trying to focus on one mob, then you've got mobs behind you. This thing will hit them all. Really, really useful. And then we've got Bob Trap. This is more of a single target. Also, Deadly Cloak is a damage over time, so you can use that on a single target and mobs. Really useful. Anyway, Bob Trap. Super good. Everyone should know what Bob Trap is. Really, really strong. Increases your crit damage by 10%. Does an insane amount of bleed damage. And this is single target, so make sure you put it under the boss's feet. And you should be fine. Just let it go to work. It's got a duration of 20 seconds. And also, guys, with this build, you will not be struggling for stamina. And you won't be struggling for magicka. Because it's split between the front bar and back bar. Next, we've got Camouflage Hunter. We do not use this. You're kind of wasting 4,000 stamina if you use this. All it is is while slotted, you gain Major Savagery and Prophecy. Increasing your weapon spell critical 
by 2600 that is all we use that for we don't actually pop that one and also we have three because we got flawless dawnbreaker which is usually my main um ultimate depending on the fight but as you can see we've got three fighter skill abilities so if we go down to the fighter skill here we have these passives Increase your weapon and spell damage by 3% for each fighter's, fighter's guild ability slotted. So because we've got free, it's increased by 9%. That's 9% uh, more damage. And also you gain free ultimate whenever you kill an enemy. Again, it's, it's ultimate. More ultimate, the better, in my opinion. And also, the passives. So a lot of people tend to say you want light armor, you want medium armor, you want heavy armor, you want this, you want this, when you don't even use them. And that's all. When I first started the game, that really confused me. Like, if I don't use the armor, why do I need all them passives? So the passives you want is basically all of them in the class skill lines. There should be about eight, eight points per skill line, something like that. And then you want all of them in the dual wield. Every single one. Then we've got the destruction staff. You want all of them from there. Now, you do not need light armor. Why don't you need light armor? Because we're not running light armor. See? We've got current bonus zero on all of them. So we don't need any light armor. Heavy armor. We're not using heavy any heavy armor. So I know a lot of builds tend to say, get all the light armor ones, even though you're not running any light armor. Or get all the heavy armor ones, even though you're not running heavy, any heavy armor. And that would confuse me to no end when I first started playing. But because we are playing me uh, with medium armor, we need all of them medium armor passives. Excavation, I mean, this is basically scrying, uh, scrying and excavation rank up together. And basically that is to get your mythic. So you definitely want to be working on excavation and scrying and getting all these skill points. What I did, I basically had a crafting build and I just did it on there. But everyone's different. Fighter skilled. So if you're a quester, I'm not much of a quester. I am definitely a dungeon runner. However, we are going to get intimidating presence. Uh, I'm more of a dungeon runner, so I just don't quest that much but you are required to intimidate people sometimes so getting the intimidating presence will help and these are passives that you definitely want with this build because you are using fighters guild abilities and then your fighters guild abilities deal an additional 10 percent this bonus doubles against werewolves and vampires so maybe you're doing like moon hunter keep or Castle Thorn or something like that, you'll get more damage. And then you've got Bounty Hunter allows you to accept bounties from the Fighters Guild and Cyrodiil. I'm not PvP here, so I don't care about that. I don't want anything there. The Undaunted passives you definitely want, because activating a synergy restores 4% of your health, stamina, and magicka. And you can see the numbers there. And then this one increases your health, stamina, and magicka by 2% per type of army. Um, heavy medium light that you have equipped I've only got two of them and um, let me show you so we have got medium there medium head medium chest medium shoulders medium waist medium hands medium legs medium feet and that is about it they've all got divines on they've all got stamina on uh, if we look at the enchantments for the staff, we've got weapon damage and we've got infused for the trait. The daggers, we've got fiery weapon and noon honed on the first one. And then we've got poisoned weapon enchantment and charged on the second dagger. And then we've got the weapon damage enchantment uh, with bloodthirsty trait on all three of the jewelry pieces. And champion points is probably the last thing to talk about here. So as you can see, I kind of test a few things, but I'm not really a numbers guy. I don't really enjoy testing these builds. I just do it for me, really. I don't want to do an entire video of what gear works and what gear doesn't. All I can say is the builds that I've got work for me, and they do a crazy amount of damage, and they can get through tri-factors. That's enough for me to use them. But anyway, the blue path, we've got Fighting Finesse, Biting Aura, Formaturge, Hope I pronounced that right. Raffle strikes. Now, remember these gold orbs here, these gold orbs are all passives. 
So you want to always make sure you've got the gold orbs. They are passives. And these ones, the actual coloured ones, are your main ones that go in your top bar. So make sure you put them in your champion bar at the top. And then once you've done that, make sure you confirm. Because a lot of people seem to forget a about the confirming so the red path we have spirit mastery oh boundless vitality fortified rejuvenation spirit mastery now the reason i've got spirit mastery is just so i can pick people up faster if it calls for it however if you're not one of them players maybe you're you prefer to get the stuff done real quick if you can hear my phone i apologize but that's annoying me just as much as you and then we've got Bloody Renewal, which restores stamina per stage. And then the green path, it really doesn't matter what you choose or what you decide. Because this is all just like goal gain, goal gain, you know, like deconstruct. The one that you want really is Steed's Blessing, Liquid Efficiency, and Rationer. That is simply because this adds time onto any food or drink that you take. And this, whenever you use a potion, 10% not to consume it, so you can save yourself some potions there. But yeah, that is basically the entire build. As you can see, I did show you the achievements. I did do a tri-factor on this build, and it v went very well. Now, you can argue, yeah, but you had a good group. Yeah, I did have a really good group. But you've got to be able to hold your own. And this build will look after you in a lot of content, so... Make sure you give it a go. Let me know what kind of videos you want to see. Because I am thinking about maybe streaming. I'm not quite sure yet. I'll have to see how good these ESO videos do. But leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new. And you want to make your way back to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.